Hey fellow Sobos, you little linen heads. Today in this video, I wanna share with you how to sew with linen in a way that gets you much more professional results. You can actually sew with linen like a professional seamstress with just a home sewing machine setup. That's what I do with my handmade clothing business, Charlie Darwin Textiles. And of course, you could learn all of these tricks just through trial and error in your own sewing practice, but I really hope that this video will speed that up a little bit for you by sharing and revealing some things I've learned in the last three years of sewing linen. We'll talk about actually the whole process from preparing your fabric to cutting it out, choosing the right thread, sewing, and even what to do with those fabric scraps that you have left over at the end. Okay, let's do it. Tip number one, be mindful of the opacity of the fabric that you're buying. There's all different types of linen fabric out there that come in all different weights. So if you're buying online especially, just be mindful about how see-through you want it to be. So I have a lightweight linen gauze that's 2.8 ounces per yard, and I'm also showing a medium weight linen that's 5.3 ounces per yard. And this medium weight linen is completely opaque, meaning it's not see-through at all, even when it's this lighter color. Tip number two, do get pre-softened linen or at least get a some sort of softener so you can soften it yourself, especially if this is gonna be anything that's touching your skin. Linen actually starts off a little bit rough. It is made from a flax plant, and if you get unsoftened linen, it can feel a little bit scratchy against your skin, a little bit stiff. Linen softens up over time, um, no matter what, as you wash it. But if you want it to start a little bit softer from the start and you're ordering the linen online, you can sort of rush the process by buying it pre-softened. Tip number three is to pre-wash and dry your fabric before you use it if this is going to be something that you might possibly wash again in the future. So my biggest tip here is to wash the fabric the way that you're going to wash it in the future. And be generous with yourself, you will likely want to wash and dry this. So I really recommend not skipping this step. What I do is I surge the raw edges of my yardage of fabric or you could do a zigzag stitch, something just quick to make sure it doesn't fray too much. And I wash my fabric with warm water, no detergent. I don't feel that it's necessary. And I dry on medium to low heat until the fabric is about 90% of the way dry. And that actually helps protect your fabric a little bit so you're not overheating and over damaging those fibers in the washing and drying process. It'll make it so your fabric doesn't wear out quite so fast. My sub tip on this one is to save the cardboard bolts that you get from the fabric store. Sometimes I go into Joann's and that cardboard bolt that holds the fabric, I'll ask if I can take some of their empty ones home and that way once I've pre-washed and dried my fabric, I can then put it back on the bolt and save it for later if I'm not using it right away for that project. Tip number four is to iron with a crap ton of steam. Once you've pre-washed your fabric, you wanna iron it out and get it super flat using tons and tons of steam. I put my iron on the hottest setting and I am constantly pressing that steam button and I even keep the constant steam on as I'm going. I love my iron. I use a chi iron and I love it because it is super smooth and it doesn't time out for a solid 30 minutes. A sub tip on this one is I keep an old water bottle around to refill the iron so I don't have to take the iron to the sink all the time. Tip number five, follow the warp, the weft, the bias when you're cutting. All these words, they sound insane, I know. But basically, when you're laying your fabric out, you've got it all ironed out flat. You wanna pay attention to the direction of the weave. So your selvage edge is the one that's sort of bound by the manufacturer. Now, going vertical and parallel to that is your warp. Going horizontal or perpendicular to that selvage edge is your weft. Now going diagonal, that's called your bias. If you're using a sewing pattern, you just wanna make sure that you're lining up the arrows with the warp. Now the way I remember it is that I always want that selvage edge to be running vertical with my clothing. So it's going to run up and down 
all pieces of my clothing, including the sleeves, the pants, and the bodice. This has to do with how much stretch goes vertically and horizontally with your fabric. Linen doesn't have that much stretch, but it does make a slight difference. Tip number six, I recommend using pattern weights to hold down your sewing pattern on your fabric. I have these old slate coasters that I use. I've also used racks and sometimes you can buy little bean bags. But either way, use some sort of weight to hold your pattern down as you place it on your fabric. Along with this, to make the marks around my fabric, because I actually like to trace it right onto the linen. If it's a light fabric, I use a 4B pencil. That's just a certain um, density of pencil, but any pencil you can get that makes lines on your fabric is great. The 4B is a little bit of a softer pencil, which means it leaves a little bit more of that graphite dust, which is great. And if it's a darker fabric that I can't see the pencil on, then I'll generally use a piece of chalk. And that chalk line is quite wide, but I know I want to cut right on the inside of that chalk line. All right, moving ahead to tip number seven, which is what kind of thread you're going to choose. Are you going to choose polyester thread or a cotton thread to sew with your linen? My personal choice is to use cotton thread when I'm doing any sort of stitching on my regular home sewing machine. Now, in a previous step, I told you to pre-wash your fabric, and this helps take any shrinkage out of the fabric. But cotton thread, it hasn't been pre-shrunk. And so if you're going to use cotton thread, just expect and anticipate that any stitching done with cotton thread is going to sort of shrink up a little bit in comparison to the fabric. And so this adds more texture to the sewn garment or quilt. And I actually really love this texture. I think it adds um, more dimension to the clothing or the quilting. So try it out, see if you like it. The cotton thread adds some more texture and I love that it adds another element of biodegradability eco-friendliness to my sewn clothes. I personally recommend Gutterman 100% cotton thread. I buy it in like the really big chunky spools so that I have plenty of it. But if you don't want any shrinking differential between your fabric and your thread, stick to a polyester thread. Polyester thread will not shrink up but it'll also not be biodegradable or be able to be plant dyed if you dye any of this fabric after you've sewn it. Now, I use polyester thread for my serger as of right now, but of course there's pros and cons to that as I just mentioned. So, <clears throat> surging ahead with tip number eight, we're gonna talk about serging or finishing your seams. So linen fabric frays a lot. You definitely wanna finish any exposed seams, anything that's going to be out in the open, rubbing up against skin, um, things that might fray over time. It's fine if they're buried within a quilt or within a collar stand, etc. Now I use a serger machine on all exposed seams and I double fold the hem lines. Now, if you don't have a serger, that's okay. It's a big investment. I do recommend you try it out sometime. I absolutely love my serger and it has completely revolutionized how I can sew clothing so professionally. But if you don't have one, that's okay. You can always finish those raw edges with a zigzag stitch. And the zigzag stitch does okay, but you might also check out how to do a clean finish seam. That's too much information to put in this video, but I recommend you search it on YouTube. Tip number nine is to stay stitch your necklines. If you're sewing clothing, if you have curves that need to match up precisely later, like a neckline to a collar stand, it's really worth it to start with one line of stitching on that neckline. Do it only about a quarter inch in, something that will get hidden within your seam. But having that one stitch on that curve will prevent that fabric from stretching as you're working with it throughout your sewing project because if the neckline stretches out, it's no longer gonna fit your collar stand. And finally, tip number 10, keep some scraps for mending later. Linen is such a durable fabric, but if you are alive at all using this fabric, using whatever you've just made, all clothing and home decor can fall prey to rips and stains. Luckily, linen is super easy and satisfying to mend. You can either mend by hand or with your sewing machine, and I think it actually looks really good once it's mended. 
So do save a few scraps from your project so that you can mend it later with the exact same matching fabric. All right, thanks so much for sticking around for all 10 tips, and I wish you tons of good energy on your next sewing project with linen. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. If you can't tell, I will bury myself in it every day. I love wearing it. I love sewing with it. I think it's such a joy to sew with and actually pretty easy to sew with. So if you're a beginner, don't be intimidated by linen. It is a little bit more expensive. So you'll want to do, ooh, I should have made that a tip. You'll want to do a practice garment before you start sewing with linen that can be a little bit more expensive. If you want to infuse some more peaceful earth tones into your next linen sewing project, try out my linen fabric that's been plant dyed over at charliedarwintextiles.com. In my shop, I'm offering this really soft mid-weight linen fabric that's been hand dyed using pigments from plants to get really rich, soothing earth tones that will help you give your next sewing project that dreamy, twank, tranquil, tranquil vibe you've been craving. And soon, I'll be putting out my first PDF sewing pattern that is optimized for sewing with linen fabric. So do stay tuned for its release by joining my email newsletter at the link below. Thanks so much. I'd love it if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to hear more from me about handmade, textiles, plant dyed, and all the behind the scenes of my handmade clothing business.